guys. So I'm gonna be showing you guys why these binders are super important to Kendall and I. And before you guys ask, Kendall is asleep. She did not sleep well last night, so she's already napping. And that's why I look kind of crazy right now, but it's okay because I thought it was a super cool thing to show you guys about these binders. So here we go. So right now, we call this just the binder. So this is my binder right now, it's for Kendall. So if we go to the doctor's office, I bring this binder with me, or I should. I haven't been bringing it with me for a while now because I really just forget. But now as Kendall is getting older and more medicine changes and more doctors and more everything, it's pretty important to bring with me. So what I'm gonna do is reorganize it all because it's pretty messy and I have tons, tons more papers to put into it. So I'm gonna put it into this cute binder just because I think it's way cuter. So we're gonna switch it over and everything like that. So the purpose of this binder is to bring it to doctor's appointments and an important part of it is if we go to the emergency room. There has been times when we went to the emergency room and they understand that Kendall has a brain malformation, but they don't know the full extent. So now we have a paper. Let me see if I can find it. It's called the getting to know me paper. So why we have this paper is because one time we went to the emergency room for a common cold and Kendall's not like a normal baby where if she has a common cold, you just throw in some saline drops and it, it's tough, but you just kind of go through it. Kendall wouldn't eat, but she was very tiny and she needed to eat and she already has problems eating. So we had to go to the hospital. We went straight to the ER, we got admitted pretty much. But before we got admitted, this doctor, I guess he listened to us. Like I kept telling him this is Kendall's normal cry. She has a very, very aggressive cry. She has a very high pitched and rhythmatic cry. It's normal, I swear. And he didn't really, I guess he didn't listen to us. So he ran many, many, many tests as in full body x-rays and CT scans and everything like that. And I kind of called him out. I'm like, you're checking for child abuse. That's what you're doing. And in my heart just sunk <laughs> because I know I don't abuse Kendall. I mean, obviously, but I don't know. I was just terrified. I was like, you're really checking that. I was kind of angry. I was frustrated. I had a lot of emotions at that point, but <laughs> it was just more frustrating that Kendall had to go through all of that without needing to, but I am thankful that they do do that for circumstances other than mine, as in if somebody does get abused and they get taken into the hospital for a common cold or another little thing that they do check for those things if the child's cry seems out of the ordinary. So I am thankful for that, but I was very frustrated and very, I had a lot of emotions. I still kind of have a lot of emotions, obviously, but that's why we had this paper saying, we got this from the Shine program and which are awesome by the way, but um, they gave us this paper to put in our binder. So if we do go to the emergency room, I hand them this paper and they still ask questions obviously, but they see this paper and they're like, oh, this is a normal cry. But um, so this paper describes, hi, my name is Kendall Annabeth Lilly. My parents' name slash caregivers' names are Nikki Lilly and Carlos Lilly. Here are their phone numbers. And it says a little bit about me. I have a very rare brain malformation called synencephaly. This is be because of this, my cry is way more aggressive and way harder to calm down. Um, my strengths and things that are easy for me is being held and bounced by mom. It does talk about like with my health conditions, I am behind, so I'm not going to be able to sit up. They have, what are they called? They're amazing people. These people are amazing. Child life specialist people. I think I said that right. They come in to the ER and they are working their butt off and they are trying to calm down these kids. They have bubbles, they are amazing. But with Kendall, I mean, if I blow a bubble at her face, she's not. there's a chance that she can't see it. There's a chance it's actually gonna scare her. Like she's just different. So I do say that she is behind in most things because I can't have her sit up while they play musical instruments in front of them. But those people are amazing. I have high respects for child life specialists. Um, it also talks about her medicine, which I have to update because we are not on Zantac. We are still on Baclofen, but it's way bumped up. And we are off of that. Wow. Her medicines change a lot. So that's another reason to have this amazing binder to keep up with all the medicines. 
Um, things to avoid. Please do not lay me down if I don't have to. There are times when they've taken Kendall's blood for certain reasons and there's times where I've gotten a held Kendall and it depends on the nurse. Maybe the nurse says, no, you have to lay her down. Sometimes I can hold her when she gets a IV put in. Sometimes the nurse says lay her down. I think it's preference of the nurse I prefer and I always ask if I can hold Kendall because I, it's the easiest way for Kendall. She is more calm. She is everything. But if a nurse prefers her to lay down for their reasons and I just trust them and I lay her down, but that, then I automatically pick her up right after she's done to calm her down. And then it's like, I don't like to lay on my back. I like to face out or be upright. So when I'm holding her, she likes to face out or be upright. So kind of like sitting, but I have to support her head that way. She is a little grown out of that now. She does like to be snuggled in and everything like that. Uh, so I do really have to update this. I guess that's why I'm doing this, right? Oh, what's this? But like I said, this binder is so important when we go to the ER or we're in the ambulance. It's so important. Kendall's had two, three ambulance rides, I believe. She's had a lot in one life flight with a helicopter. That was scary. I was sitting up front with the pilot because I couldn't, there wasn't enough room to sit in the back with Kendall. They had to sedate her. Otherwise, it would have been the worst ride of her life for her because she was just crying so hard. But I was sitting up front. That's when we thought she had a seizure. I don't need this. This is an after summary. I do keep a lot of them, but. Aww. Aww, I got a picture of me as a baby. That's me. <laughs> I don't know why that's in there. Aww, that's cute. That is so cute. I'm gonna hide like the hospital just to be, I don't know, safe. But look at this. Those are all the nurses. Oh my gosh, we were in the NICU for so long. So I wouldn't say these are super important. These are more papers to look back on from older appointments, which I am gonna keep. Here's some discharge stuff. Yeah, so I am gonna keep this just so I can look back and if it, somebody asks on what day, for what reason, I have it. It just makes me feel better to have it and feel organized with it. So I am gonna keep it. So I think we should get two weeks. I don't know what half of this stuff is. I made this binder way upside down. <laughs> I just organized this black binder not that long ago, but I do want it. I just wanted to put it in this cuter binder. I feel like I need a hole punch. I don't have, I don't have one. I'll just rip holes. I don't know. Oh no, I can't. It's all online. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna have to do this the slow way. Aw, Kendall's still asleep. Cute baby. Oh, look at all this stuff. I'm gonna keep all of this. This is, I have to keep it in my records. It says so at the top. It says keep in your records. This is like the chromosome, this is like her MRI test that she had at a few days old. At three days old, she had a test. I don't need this. This. I could use the rest of this. This is just scratch paper. Oh. No. <laughs> so this is scratch paper, which um, is also pretty important. Say I am in the ER and, or I'm even just in the hospital and they give me new instructions on something, I can jot it down or I can oh, write down everything that I, every question that I need for the doctors. Sometimes when you are just in the rush and it's been a few days in the hospital, you have questions and they build up, but you see the doctor for 15 minutes and you just completely go blank because it's so much pressure. So it's awesome to have something to jot down while you are trying to remember questions and everything to ask the doctor. So this is kind of cool. Like this is from our first 
um, after summary at Kendall's neurologist that was outside of the NICU. So like this is where we still are today. Well, this neurologist retired, so we got referred to another one, but still in the same hospital. So Kendall has schizencephaly. Schiz means split. Remember, like, if you think of schism, schizophrenic, schizophrenic, I can't say it now. Schiz means split, so they have split personalities. Schizencephaly means split brain, cephaly brain. So schiz means split. She has a split brain or cleft inside her brain that's not supposed to be there. It was there from early in the pregnancy and her brain formed around it. She also has microcephaly, which means she has a small head. This reason for the reason the head grows is due to the brain growing inside the brain and pushing out on the head. I think they meant brain growing inside the skull that pushes out on the head. Who knows? Most babies will have an open fontella, fontel? Oh, I don't know that word. At this age, because the brain is still pushing on the head. That means like this, I know they're talking about the soft spot. So they have a hot spot, hot spot, hot spot, soft spot. Kendall didn't have this at this point because her head was so little that it just kind of fused together already. He wasn't too worried about it. So we just, we didn't do anything about it. He said he wasn't worried. He didn't want to open it back up because he knew the brain wasn't going to just keep growing anyways properly. It's still going to grow. She's still going to, her head's still going to grow, but it's just not going to grow as much as another kid's head. So it goes on to say, um, I'll just kind of read exactly their predictions of Kendall. These are their facts that they look at, but I don't take it as the truth because I believe the truth is Jesus's word and I believe what he says. So these are the facts that I do need to understand though. I can't just ignore the facts, but I still know the truth, if that makes sense. So it talks about we cannot make strong predictions about her development, but most babies with schizencephaly and microcephaly are significantly ooh, permanent neurological disabilities. She will likely have a lot of learning troubles, but we don't know how severe this is going to be. Um, we don't know how severe this would be, but we can guess most likely have troubles with language and interaction. We can also predict that she may be more stiff and rigid than most people. This is because of the spinal cord is hyperactive. It makes people with this condition more rigid. This is called cerebral palsy. She will need physical therapy to keep her limber and to help optimize her learning how to use her arms and legs. Other problems that is common in kids with Kendall's condition is seizure disorder. The two most common forms of seizures you may see could be convulsion seizure type or subtle staring seizures, complex partial seizures. Kendall has not confirmed we had a seizure. There was a point in time where it looks like she's staring off and we thought, oh no, that's an absent seizure where it's like you stare, but we can snap her out of it pretty quickly. The doctors, she's done it during a um, EEG and it's just not confirmed. So we don't think it's a seizure. Maybe it's because her eyesight isn't the best. So she doesn't know what she's looking at or things like that. But it also talked about cerebral palsy. So we've technically not been diagnosed but like Kendall has it, like it says, like she is more rigid. She is, she's a physical therapy and OT and we do a lot. Sorry, I thought she was awake. We do a lot, like she has her elbow braces on right now. She has hand braces, which we are converting to a hand or a thumb loop, but we kind of got stuck in the coronavirus. So we haven't gotten to that yet. She has a hip brace. I mean, like she has things for it. So we are dealing with it, but technically not diagnosed, but we are, I think. It's kind of confusing, but. Yeah. I really need a punch hole, hole punch. What is it called? Get that set in there. This is so perfect. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea how this got in here, but it's certified trainer quiz host for PF Chang's certified trainer host. Like questions. I know Carlos's sister works for PF Chang, so maybe that's, I'm sorry, I don't know how we got these. I'll keep them just in case she needs them, but she's worked here for a while now. I need to keep this for sure. I don't need this. Update it a little bit and put it in there. So I updated it with updating the medicine. I updated that I use arm braces and a hip brace, not just the hand braces anymore. And I also updated ways that you can help me. A bright light can be overstimulating for Kendall, so I wrote dim the lights because they can do that in there. I've, I've done it. <laughs> I also talked about, please don't be too loud when coming in and out of my room and let mom hold me. 
so letting me hold her is probably the best way to soothe her um coming in and out of the room there was one time and this is not her fault i mean it's the er and she would come in and say hi or like really loud and i just got kendall to sleep i mean it was like midnight and we were still in the er room ready to be admitted but we were waiting on a room and she just came in high and really loud and woke Kendall up and I was so mad. We just want her sensory levels to stay calm and we want her to be the absolutely most comfortable that she can be during these times. <sighs> so now my emergency binder slash just normal hospital Kendall binder is ready. So I highly recommend Getting one, getting one of these binders and or making one of these binders for your little one who tends to go to the hospital a lot or a little one who has special needs. Um, I've been doing this for, I've been um, wanting to do this for so long. I've had so many people tell me, you need to do it. And I did it with the black one. My dad actually started it out and then I reorganized it maybe a month or two ago, but I really wanted this cute binder and to reorganize it again because there's just so many papers and it just keeps going and going. But I really highly recommend it. I'm also going to make a baby bag that I am going to pack up some of Kendall's clothes and extra syringes and little things like that just in case we do ever go back into the ER and have to get admitted because it's really good to have on hand an emergency bag like with my deodorant in it and stuff like that because when I go with Kendall to the hospital, I don't leave the hospital. There is like a little hotel that the hospital kind of owns, I guess, right beside it where parents can stay, but I can't leave her side. Um, I, yeah, I've never even stepped foot in that place. I've always just slept on the little pull-out couch next to Kendall. Um, but yeah, so I really highly recommend doing this. It's so important to me and it's, it's not hard to do. It's kind of fun and you can make it all cute and stuff. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you have questions, please drop them below and I'll try to answer them as fast as I can. Thank you guys so much.